Hello, welcome to Five Things. This is Eric McKinney, joined as always by Mark Culkin and Greg Katz. Guys, we are do- we are doing five things from USC forty eight, UCLA forty five, and it it looked for a time like it was going to be infinity to infinity. I mean, th- this was the the offensive sort of explosion that I think everybody thought could happen when these two offenses and and these two defenses uh, met up here. A huge win for USC. Just saying the stakes here. Pac-12 championship game Lock, locked in already. Uh, that is a, a one loss season through the Pac-12. That loss comes on a one point loss at Utah. Uh, the turnaround in one year under Lincoln Riley. Uh, not done yet. You still have Notre Dame. And, and that that's an issue I, th- I think we can get into a little bit later. Um, but let's start. Five things. First thing off the top, player of the game, uh, Greg. Going to you, your player of the game from this one. The player of the game for me, uh, yeah. no brainer, Caleb Williams. He's probably took a big giant step tonight for that Heisman Trophy. Uh, but more importantly, he led his team to a big victory. Uh, 32 of 43, uh, one interception, two TDs, one rushing touchdown, a 33 yard uh, net as far as running the ball. Uh, got off to a slow start. Uh, the Trojans didn't uh, produce in a couple of early first quarter drives, came away with nothing. But man, after that, he was on fire. It was unbelievable. And some of the ones that you say, well, how did he, you know, go 32 of 43? Well, some of the, some of the ones were just dropped. Uh, but uh, man, what a performance and if he can duplicate this next week against Notre Dame, I'll tell you what, my my money, I'm going back to the Carson Palmer uh, uh, template, which is basically, uh, you know, you do great against Notre Dame and you follow that, you know, that's following tonight's game at uh, here at the Rose Bowl. Just phenomenal. I don't think there's enough stuff I can say. Yeah, 470 passing yards. That, that's a career high. It was 411 coming into this one. Blew that away. Just an outstanding game. Uh, Mark, your player of the game. Uh, 470 yards and only nine incompletions. So let that sink in. I yeah. mean, his, his rating was 176.9. Yeah, I'm gonna... pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, yeah. Um, look, obviously, Caleb Williams is the player of the game, but let's, let's just give a little consideration to – the running backs, Austin Jones and Darwin Barlow, the way that they lifted up that group, um, I guess we could say filling in for, 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 for Travis Dye, uh, that was special. I mean, let's, let's look at those numbers real quick. What are they? Um, do, 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 I apologize for this. Yeah. Uh, Austin Austin Jones, Austin Jones goes 120 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah. 120 for Austin Jones. Barlow comes in three rushes, 25 yards. Caleb Williams, Ray Leak Brown. I mean, the bottom line is USC was able to run the ball, um, maybe not as effectively as UCLA or at least appeared, but just as effectively. And without that run game, Caleb doesn't throw for the 470 yard period. Yeah, uh, just uh, let me just cut in here since you brought it up, Mark. Uh, Trojans had 179 yards uh, rushing, uh, which is kind of amazing when you consider that UCLA had. 198 yards rushing and you thought UCLA was going to have the big discrepancy. Right. Yeah. I'm glad you guys went, went Caleb and Austin Jones, that they were certainly my sort of one, a one B Austin Jones. What, what a game. And and I thought it was poignant after the game, he was asked, you know, did did Travis die kind of give you any sort of last minute pointers or inspiration or whatever. And he said, you know, remind him who you are. Like you, you haven't been, the guy this year but you can be and and Lincoln Riley kind of said the same thing like he could have been the guy you know getting these carries and, and putting up the yards that Travis Dye did and and he really uh kind of hammered that home uh, you know it Jordan Addison right 11 catches 178 yards the big touchdown where they kind of sneak him out of the the backfield there and and get him wide open uh a couple big third down catches he, he's such kind of a, a security blanket there you typically think about the tight end giving the quarterback easy throws he's on the outside and he gives Caleb Williams a, a bunch of easy throws there. And so that's, that's everybody sort of from the, from the offense 
defensively, it's tough when you give up 45 points, but you did enough. And, and I think everyone who was involved in a takeaway and, and Corey Foreman absolutely deserves credit for that play that he makes at the end of the game. Uh, a couple big interceptions. Uh, Makai Blackman had one. Shane Lee had one. And, and Tyrone Teleni with a, a absolutely massive uh, f- force fumble there. So players of the game all over. And, and I thought it was special that Lincoln Riley kind of said, look at the gigantic impacts made by guys who have not had maybe statistically significant seasons all throughout the year. And, and I thought that was, that was big in this one. You need guys to show up kind of all year, year all year long, but in games like this, it's your team. It's who you bring in and, and guys really stepped up, really uh, showed out. Well, that's, that's a, a lot for, for one thing. Let's go to, let's go to the second thing. And that's the play of the game. Uh, Greg, we're going to go back to you, your play of the game. No doubt. Corey Foreman. Corey, I mean, I've watched it in the press box here after the game three or four times, and I'm just blown away by watching what this guy did. Uh, this is the type of play that could key his future, uh, put him in a, on a good mindset for Notre Dame, Pac-12, and beyond. This may have been the the lighting of the candle for him. Uh, but it was incredibly huge. He will he goes down in USC folklore for that intercept in, to the end of time. Absolutely, Mark, your play of the game. Yeah, it might not be the, at the level of Mark Cusano knocking down the Notre Dame pass down that uh, that streak, but um, it was huge for Corey Foreman. I, I, I mean, that's just, it's an understatement. His team recognized it. Um, they gathered around him. The coaches recognized it. Uh, but throughout the week, you know, I guess Corey had made this play during practice as well because part of the communication was Shane Lee pointed it out. He made sure he was in the right place at the right time for when that play came up and, you know, ball ended up in Corey's hands and sealed the win. So hopefully he builds off that. That gives him the confidence to be the Corey Foreman that everybody is anticipating. Yeah, clearly, right. Corey Foreman sort of ends the game. I know SC has to run, run a, a you know a couple of plays after that, and, and that's that's. I think we're all in agreement there. But I'm going to point out that Tyrone Zeleny sack forced fumble again. That's the one that flips it, and USC can kind of jump out and <clears throat> score the touchdown after that, because boy, UCLA had kicked a, a field goal on the drive before that. They fumble there. But then they go touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. If that if that fumble doesn't happen or or DCR can make a play there and they start that touchdown streak earlier, USC doesn't have sort of the cushion at the end where they keep stretching it from three to ten and, and three to ten. That's for me, that was boy, that was a a really big one. It doesn't end the game, but it put USC definitely in, in the position they wanted to be coming all the way from down 14 to where they could take that lead there. Uh, let's go expectation met for a third thing. And, and Greg, back to you for that one. Well, the expectation was going to be a high scoring game and it was a high scoring game. I think the overs and unders was something about 75 or 76 points. Uh, but, uh, you know, I thought the real irony to it all is as high as the score got, it came down to one defensive play and who would have thought that USC's defense, which has been, basically ravaged by everybody in the media and rightfully so at times uh, came up with the biggest play of the game. Uh, There's nothing more beautiful than a victory formation after that type of play. I mean, it was like you could just exhale uh, on, on, on that. So uh, yeah, I'd say it was a high, high scoring game. Yeah. Mark, your, uh, your expectation that was met. Oh yeah, definitely high scoring. A lot of energy in the, in, in the game, um, and that was something I expected because it, we really haven't seen that all year at USC. Uh, and for UCLA, the same it can be said. So to, when these two teams got together, and Lincoln Riley pointed this out after the game, um, he really felt that rivalry, that energy in the stadium. And he, he made out and said, look, football on the West Coast is not dead. This was a really good thing for West Coast football. So um, that, I guess was part of my expectation and, it, and it, it arrived yeah I, I think that's it right that that surprise 
two of the best offenses in the country ran the ball up and down the field and scored a bunch of points uh, against each other. And I don't think this is a, oh, these are, are garbage trash defenses and, and that's why you're doing it. These, these are offenses that I think have put up points and, and yards against pretty much everybody out there. And, and so I think it'll be, that's the expectation for the USC offense, certainly going forward. Every time they play, they're going to need to put up, up yards and points. Fourth thing, and, and that's the surprise from this one. Greg, we'll go back to you. What what were you surprised by here? My my biggest surprise was basically holding uh, Zach Charbonnet to, uh, believe it or not, 105 yards uh, rushing. Uh, his long uh, was uh, 19 yards, but more importantly, no touchdowns. No touchdowns. So if you would have told me going into this game, that he was going to have only 105 yards rushing, I'd say, what are you smoking? But the bottom line was, is they seemed to have an idea of where he was going and they strung out a lot of plays. Sometimes they, they weren't in the right spot, but when they were in the right spots, he really was just running uh, laterally and uh, more power to him. I mean, he did have uh, 10 yards in losses, which was a good thing. But, uh, no, I'd say that that was my surprise with Charbonneau. Yeah, Mark, you're surprised from this one. I got a few, and I'll keep them brief. Uh, USC's four for 10 on third down effect, uh, effectiveness. I, that surprised me. I really thought they'd be a lot better there. Um, the other one was the their kickoffs. I'm still trying to figure out what the rationale was behind kicking it back onto Foothill Boulevard one time and then trying to do a pooch kick. Um, Lincoln tried to explain it after the game. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that they thought it would work, but whatever. Um, so th that was, I guess, my biggest surprise, those those two things. Uh, and by the way, Greg, he was 95 yards, 19 carries. So those, those are his official numbers. They kept him below 100. Just FYI, because specifically, and and this goes to my uh, surprise too with you, Greg, is he lost? You mentioned he lost ten yards rushing. He came into the game, he lost eight yards rushing the yeah. entire season. USC had him lose ten yards uh, in this one, and and it was funny. Alex Grinch was sort of asked after the game, "How did you sort of load up against him and and stop him a little bit?" And he said, "Tuli," and and that was it. Like they used him a little bit. Had him, you know, sink back a little and and run at the line and and try to cut through that way and uh, very effective and and that was me. I I assumed coming into this one, Charbonnet's going for one fifty kind of easy at the start and anything sort of give or take on that maybe determines uh, who wins. The fact that USC was able to rise up and do so well um, against him again that that's kind of my surprise from this one. I th I think the red zone stuff too. Right, USC five of eight in the red zone. This was a UCLA defense that had not been great in the red zone this year. A USC offense that had been very good. Surprising early uh, to see that there, and that takes us. Let's go to the fifth thing here. The biggest takeaway from this one. Greg, <coughs> start with you. Your biggest takeaway here. Well, my biggest takeaway is going back to last year's game where they gave up sixty-two points, I believe it was, and to make a turnaround like this from but 30 points and all of a sudden you're you're you you've won the game and UCLA had all these guys coming back i mean it that's miraculous that that I mean that is astounding my other takeaway is forgive me uh i'm going to pat myself on the back here this morning i was watching the uh ESPN game day and they they had uh, Lee Corsell on and he they asked him about USC and the final three games and the college football playoffs, he said, USC is going to win, <clears throat> excuse me, all three games, and they're going to be in the college football playoffs. And Kurt Herbstreit said, excuse me, can you repeat that one more time, please? But at the start of the season in the ONSO, the column that I write, I predicted USC would go 11-1. and one. So I'm only one game away uh with the fighting Irish coming in next Saturday, if we can do that, then I nailed it. Maybe a little luck involved, but I nailed it. Mark, your takeaway from this one. Uh, 
yeah, I'm just going to kind of piggyback off of what Greg said. The fact that this team is now 10 and one and heading to Vegas to the conference championship game after they finished four and eight last year and had their faces rubbed in the dirt at home. Uh, Kyle Ford mentioned this after the game. USC is not about having other players signing autographs during the game. We're not having any more of that. There is a new attitude on this team. And it is very evident when they speak. They took this game personally. And Eric, I know we were talking on our way back up here, our thoughts for next week. I disagree. I think they're going to be able to take that emotion. They're, they're looking past the conference championship game and the Rose Bowl opportunity. They see the playoffs. They got some help from another USC this year, this week. You thought they were going to get some help from other teams? USC is going to be right on the outside looking at the playoffs now. Beat, beat Notre Dame, beat in the conference championship game. It's there. Yeah, Brett Nealon, a guy who threw out a, a couple shots oh. after. Like, it, you know, <laughs> UCLA talk, they talked during the week. A couple guys made some comments and – and Brett Nealon had a had a you know we run LA kind of comment. They 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 had to eat that last year. Sixty two points in the Coliseum, the tied for the most that anyone had ever put up. They 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 thought about that for a long time. And my takeaway is that the 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 amount of space covered between the end of last year and this year. And Lincoln Riley, right? He's he gets the he's he's over the top of everything. He kind of covers the whole thing, but. The amount of work that the players had to put in over this last year to get to this point. And they're not great defensively. They're going to give up points. They're going to give up yards. There's issues still that they have to fix. They've won all but one game, and that one game was a was a one-point loss. Imagine saying that sentence at the end of last year. It, 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 Lincoln Riley's right when he points out, hey, we should take some time and just appreciate where we are right now and, and what we've done in this one season and and it really is that that win uh tonight against usc or against ucla with those usc players coming off the field and going to the band and going to the the fans that was emotional andrew Voorhees is going up on on the stage brett nealon is there they're ringing the bell they almost pulled the cord off the bell trying to ring this thing and and it was a, a big win so again we're wrapping up here a, a huge 48 45 win by usc over ucla in the Rose Bowl, USC punches their ticket to the Pac-12 championship game. For Greg Katz, for Mark Culkin, this is Eric McKinney. Thanks for watching We Are SC. Thanks for watching Five Things.